Welcome to our section nouns lesson. Now, if you think of chapter one as that four layer Python pyramid that we talked about in the last video that was based on detail, then the fully detailed individual how and why lessons that we've been watching for a while now, they make up the base. The general nouns, connections, and mnemonics that we covered in the last video without all of the individual lessons details, they would represent the second layer of this pyramid. And now abstracting even further in this video, we are gonna focus on this third level, which will cover the generalized groupings of the sections. So our goal here is to avoid the detail and look at general commonalities that the sections share. If we're lucky, we might even find an emergent property or two, but remember, we're not looking at the hydrogen and oxygen, the H2O. We're now looking at the wetness of water. So now let's pull back even more and review the forest, not the trees. The very first section of chapter one was the install and setup section. So even though this section did break from our concept of the informational nouns or the Python constructs of nouns, because it was essential to get up and running with the tools we'd be using for the rest of the course, it did have our very first why video, which did address one very high level concept, and that was programming as a whole. So we talked about how programming is actually more about a way of thinking than it is anything else. And although we do need to focus on the clarity of our request, the computer demands that we type things in specifically. It is very creative as soon as you get past that. We have to find creative ways to make sure that the layers form into some kind of logical conclusion, that we have a story for our variable that can pass through and it changes into what we expect it to change into every time. Now our next section was on mutability, and the learning objective for mutability is to get your head around the process of informational evolution and understand a very important Python object called a variable. Hopefully I was able to connect the fact that the variable is more of a static container that you're going to be referring to with a unique ID, and that this process of mutability is the different stages that it goes through, not with the container changing, but with the contents of the container changing. Hopefully you understood that code reads like a book from top to bottom and from left to right. And we can think about our variables as the characters of a story and the verbs that we're going to learn in the next chapter as the way to build the situations and the context that will change our character, the variable. So moving from top to bottom and left to right, we also should have learned that we need to think about coding as something that takes place over time. This is why we talked about the concepts like scope, access, and types. They're all meant to be seen as a way to describe the characteristics that are only relevant for the point in time where we look at them. So if we say, does Dylan have a hat on right now? We can say no, but that doesn't mean I'm never gonna have a hat on. And then our third section was all about types. This is really where we dive into the meat of the nouns. And we group the first section into single types, meaning that the shot glasses, the variables, only hold a single element. So we also learned that even though every shot glass has a unique ID, they also can be pulled back, abstracted on, and look for shared properties. And we call these the types. So the way I started imagining this is if you went to Target and you went to the glasses aisle and there was a shelf and on the top you saw all different types of shot glasses and then underneath it you saw all different types of mugs like coffee mugs and things like that and then underneath that you saw all like kind of traditional kitchen glasses, big tall clear glasses. So they all have the same ability to hold any type of liquid, they all have unique shapes and sizes, but they can also be grouped onto these shelves based on how much liquid they store and a few general characteristics about how they're built. So the learning objective for this single type section was to get comfortable with a few of the most basic Python types and which shelf they fit on. These single types would be the smallest size mugs in our mnemonic, so you could think of them as the shot glasses for the simple reason that they can only hold one value at a time, like an integer or a float. And I should also note here that we grouped text into the single Python types, although that could possibly be a group type also, but I like to think of a word as a, a single element, but technically it's not. And our last section was covering these group types. So the learning objective for the group type section was to get comfortable with a few of the most basic Python types, lists, matrices, tuples, sets, and dictionaries. And we should think of these variable types as much bigger. On the shelf, this would be the biggest classes we have. But in fact, in this fictional world of information, they're not only bigger, they're kind of made of this flexible material that could allow them to grow like a balloon to any size, as big as the store, as big as the country, basically as big as a computer's memory can handle. 
and they can hold all sorts of different individual types inside of them. So we can have group types that have individual types that have individual elements. And these group types can hold them in such a way that the elements can be retrieved, stored, or individually removed and added. And hopefully the big takeaway from this lesson was that you realize that we can package big things in easy to find ways. Like these can be almost thought of as their own databases, especially like a dictionary with a pair value. You know, normally you think of an Excel sheet. A lot of programming and pretty much every situation I can think of right now, it's like about storing information and then recording how it changes over time and then somehow manipulating and, and giving it back. I mean, when you have uh, like a messenger app, what you're doing is it's storing all the messages that are sent to you. It's allowing you to write back and they're being stored again, um, like any of the social networking things. When you take a photograph, it's like capturing a memory. You're putting that information into storage that could be inside of, you know, all the pixel values could be inside of a dictionary, for example. Um, there's a lot of getting your head around this concept of mutability, and that's what makes applications actually do things. So this concept of storage inside of variables, inside of types, and then ultimately inside of groups is really important for that concept of mutability to work because we need to store this information and then change it over time. So we're almost at the top of the pyramid now, and I just want to congratulate you on making it this far. No matter what subject it is, whether you're passionate or excited about it, learning a laundry list of nouns that's pretty much out of context is going to be less exciting than the more creative process of actually seeing how all of those nouns fit together. So you're going to love it when you start realizing how to use these tools and building your own stuff. But in our next lesson, we're actually going to see some context, which is going to be really fun. I've been saving the best for last because we're going to look at real Python projects, and we're going to draw an analogy to an auto shop class in a garage full of cars. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.